Hello guys, today we're gonna talk about something different and it will not be related to PvP. Instead, it will be related to PvE and it will be a build for a Firestaff blunderbuss. As many of you requested, they wanted to see a Firestaff blunderbuss in action, more specifically in PvE. So today we're gonna take a look at this build and we see if it's viable for dungeons, mutations and is it really necessary to go all melees as many people are rejecting everything that's ranged in dungeons. As we all know, melee was kink in PvE and I believe that it still is, especially for high and tier PvE content which is related to speedruns and of course highest score possible in the dungeons. It was like that since the very beginning of the mutations when they were introduced way back in the time in the new world PvE system. The reasons are many, but I believe I can give you a few examples so you can understand why people prefer to have more melees in the group of dungeon instead of having some ranged. The first and most important reason is the fact that a melee weapon can apply hits to all the targets which are piled up together. For example, if we grab, let's say, four or five enemies at the same time, then we can swing with our light and heavy attacks and we're gonna hit every single one of them. The same cannot go for the ranged users because their light and heavy attacks will not be able to penetrate or hit the other targets around them. The only way for a ranged user to hit many enemies at the same time is by using an ability and as we know the abilities have cooldowns which means that the DPS output will not be as consistent as a melee user. Another reason for the differences between the melee and range, and in my opinion the most important one, is simply the kit of every each weapon and the differences that all the abilities provide. Let's take a look at the spear for example, which have one of the strongest debuffs possible. Let's take a look at Skewer, which is the main ability and also the perk for the skill will apply a 47% weaken to the target's hit. This perk is maybe the most important one while going into the highest tier of mutations and nobody would want to go there without a Skewer. Of course, this is not all because the Spear has another great ability and this is the Perforate. While the perforate reduces the target's armor by 30%, it also applies another 30% of weaken, which extends the weaken in total to 77% only by the spear. Then, if we add up the great axe, which is also a really common used melee weapon in the dungeons, we can also see another weapon ability and with its perk, which is the Maelstrom. Maelstrom is actually providing a 27% weaken if the perk is on the weapon, which is insanely powerful combined with the spear weakens that we already have. With those two weapons, we can basically guarantee almost 100% uptime on the weaken on all targets. But of course that's not all because the Great Axe also have two other abilities which are really helpful in the clumps and also making all mobs to get together. Those abilities of course are the Gravwell and the Reap. However, those are only two of the melee weapons that are used in mutations. So let's take a look at another one which is the Sword and Shield. As we know, the best tanks usually are sword and shields, running light armor and of course using leadership. Why would you ask for leadership if you are tanking? Well, because it basically provides 10% increased damage to all party members at all time while holding the sword and shield. Of course, in the sword and shield abilities, there is one called Shield Rush, which is also providing weakening to the targets, which is for 20%, and of course, if you have the perk for it, it would also grant you Fortify. Since the video is mainly about fire stuff and blunderbuss, I don't want to bother you guys with more and more differences between the melee and the range, but I guess that at this point it's kinda clear that the melee weapons have usually better kit which contains better weaken, better crowd control or better empower even that being self or group empowers. Of course, 
on the mage side there is one particular weapon that have all those things together and that's the void gauntlet the void gauntlet can provide a lot of benefits through the whole party and at the same time it can debuff the enemies as well the main ability for that is the oblivion with its passives under however the void gauntlet usually is paired up with the life staff and the healers are using the weapon in the dungeon runs due to the fact that the buffs and debuffs are not overlapping it's not really worth it to go for second void gauntlet and therefore this weapon kinda leaves the scene and goes only for the healers now you are left with fire staff, ice gauntlet and of course blunderbuss with rapier and from those four weapons mainly the rapier is the best choice the rapier has the highest potential damage and it's usually paired up with the ice gauntlet which provides a small rent and of course some aoe damage due to the storm so now let's take a closer look to the fire staff blunderbuss combination and what it could be done with it in those dungeons mainly those two weapons are perfect pair for high burst damage on single targets the fire staff also provides a small AOE which can be used for small packs of mobs. The best value of the two weapons can be seen in dungeons which don't have that many mobs. Such expeditions are Genesis, Tempest, Lazarus, Iniet and to some extent the new expedition Savage Divide. For the dungeons with many mobs into them such as Depths, Starstone, Forge, Dynasty and Barnacles this combination of fire staff and blunderbuss will not have the same potential. If we take a look on the skill trees, I'm going on the fire staff with pillar of fire, fireball and burnout. Now I know that many of you might ask, why would you go with burnout when the flamethrower is dealing way more damage? That's true, but in this combination of weapons with the blunderbuss, you are switching way too many times between the two weapons, so technically you are not left with a lot of time to use the flamethrower. However, if you want to go mainly with your fire staff, then the flamethrower would be a nice addition. Going over to the blunderbuss, we are going with claw shot, azo trap no blast and of course grenades. The grenades are extremely useful too for high damage even in bigger clumps and they can also be used with the weapon perk which will reduce the enemy's healing effects. This is specifically nice to be used in nature mutations. Now I know that may some of you ask why won't you go with blast shot which technically provides a small amount of rent. If you go with blast shot you would not have enough points on the left side skill tree and you would not be able to unlock the ultimate unload ability which technically increases your damage. Last but not least the attributes that I'm using for this build are an equal split between strength and intelligence for up to 300 points in each. Of course I'm going with just a little bit of constitution so I can get this extra HP but if you want to be a full glass cannon you can distribute the rest of the points as well into strength and intelligence. Be aware that the magnifier will actually make your life miserable and you have to really pay attention to the exact points that you want to have. Looking over to the gear pieces there is not much to be said since the Wart and Bane system is no longer in the game. However, I would suggest you to pick the four perks necessary for this build and they are the Refreshing Pillar of Fire, the Empowering Fireball, the Venturing Claw Shot and if you can the Plague Splitting Grenades. For weapons I would suggest you to go with Keen Vicious Keenly Empowered Fire Staff and of course for the Blunderbuss you can use Enchanted Attunement and Keenly Empowered. However, any cheaper version with two of those three perks would be still quite nice. And with that guys, I want to thank you for watching. I wish you really fun times with the build since I believe it's one of the most funny ones out there and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Please share your feedback and questions in the comments below or simply join my Discord community where we discuss any topics related to New World but not only. If you would like to catch me live in action, you can also follow me on Kick, where I'm streaming regularly with a schedule. Thank you once again for watching and I will see you on the next one.